Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. It's Tuesday evening. I believe it's about 8.30ish, 8.45ish. I'm not real sure. I hope y'all are having a blessed day. We went live tonight on YouTube and did uh, Mama's Fudge. So I just had a piece of fudge and it was really good. And I was supposed to have popcorn tonight because we ate a really early supper. We ate supper about 4 o'clock uh, because we were in town and... They postponed, Amy had an appointment to have her teeth cleaned at 3, we got there, and um, they postponed it till 5.30, said we were supposed to be there at 2, but our text said 3 o'clock, anyway. We had to kill some time, so we went to Popeye's and had the new chicken sandwich. Can I say this? It is amazing. If you like chicken sandwiches, go to Popeye's and get you one. Now, I got the classic chicken, I didn't get the spicy chicken, but it was so good. So, I have to say, I think theirs are better than anybody's, okay? Um, anyway, we bought groceries, then we came home, unloaded the groceries, then we made fudge live on YouTube, and now I'm, I am exhausted. I got some new shoes. Um, I think now it's been all, almost two weeks. I kept thinking I did get a different brand. I did, not a different brand, but a different make, and I shouldn't have, because I've worn... New Balance 990s for probably three or four years, and that's all I wear, y'all. I can't wear anything else. Not to a funeral, not to church, not to nothing. And so I decided I would try a new style that was supposed to be stability because I like the colors better. Because you know how crazy these tennis shoes look these days. Anyway, they're killing my feet. I, it just blows my mind that a shoe could make that big of a difference, but it can and I have given them a couple of weeks. I've only worn one, and so I'm going to have to return one of them. And so my feet have been hurting me bad, um, so I can't really do a whole lot. Yesterday, I had went into town late, late last night, and that's why I didn't come on here and talk to y'all, because by the time I got home, I had to run and do a couple of things. My feet were hurting, and I was just tired. So anyway, we're going to talk about Exodus today and Moses. And today um, we're reading, and let's see, let me flip over here with y'all. I'm going to yawn. I'm already sleepy, y'all. Okay. I'm getting there in a minute. I don't know why, but I flipped my Bible over like a ding dong. We're in Exodus chapter 11, I believe, and it starts with the death of the firstborn announced, okay? We had talked about Pharaoh and Moses and all the plagues. I believe it was Friday I talked to y'all. And um, I told you guys that the next one would be the, about the Passover. Well, of course, God hardened the heart of Pharaoh and he wouldn't let the people go. So the last thing they planned to do, God said he was going to kill all the firstborn and even the firstborn of the cattle. And um, so he told the Israelites that they were to um, sacrifice a lamb the night before the Passover. They were to kill the lamb and they were to roast it and they, they couldn't boil it. He told them they couldn't boil it or do something else. I can't remember what he said. But he said they had to roast it. And um, they have to eat every bit of the meat. He said that they had to have... Um, let's see. I thought this was kind of significant. Let me see. Um, says you can take it from the sheep or from the goats, and now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And, um, you should kill it at twilight. It says that twilight is debated since a new day began on, at sundown. The lamb was killed on the 14th, and the meal was eaten at the beginning of the 15th, and the day of the Israelites left Egypt. By the time of Christ, the custom was to kill the lamb between 3 and 5 p.m. So, 
they had to kill the lamb, and the, the big thing was that they were supposed to put its blood on the lintel of the door and on the side posts the night that they killed it, because the next day, um, the death angel would come through and kill the firstborn. And if it saw the blood on the lintel of the door and on the side posts, it would pass over the home where the blood was shown, and it wouldn't kill their firstborn. So um, the Israelites all um, did that. They did as they were told to do. And they put the blood on the lintel and on the side posts of the doors. And uh, sure enough, every firstborn was killed from the king all the way, they said, to the, to the slave girl's um, home. And, um, and so there was a big cry out, of course, in the morning because all of the firstborn were dead, even the firstborn of the cattle. So it was really horrible. And so, um, of course, then Pharaoh said, y'all go, get your animals, your kids, get out of here. So he sent the people out. Now, it says that God didn't want them to take the short route uh, to the promised land. He wanted them to take the longer route through the wilderness because he was afraid that if they had to face um, a war or fighting, that they would turn around and go back to Egypt. So we sent them through the wilderness. And um, so the people head out into the wilderness. They leave Egypt. Now, the night before the Passover, or the before this Passover started, they did ask the people um, of Egypt to give them jewels and gold and things. And the people by then knew that God was real. They were ready to give them whatever they wanted. And so when they left Egypt, they actually had um, took the spoil or the good stuff from the Egyptians. Okay. And the Egyptians had actually given it to them. They didn't have to take it. They gave it to them. And so they left there with everything they had and even some um, some things that were worth things, worth money. Um, now, I'm not going to get to the parting of the Red Sea. So right now, we'll talk a little bit about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He told them that this was going to be something that they would always remember and something that they would do. And they'll continue to have Passover so that they can tell their children um, what happened. And they, they would remember what God had done for them to take them out of Egypt. I think it said they had been there 400 and I want to say 10 years. So I could be a little bit wrong. So, But that's a long time. They had been in Egypt under slavery. and for, So that's a very long time. So it said that God wanted them to remember that he took them out of Egypt with a strong hand. In other words, it was a big deal. You know, and what all he done was big. And he wanted them to remember it. So the Feast of Unleavened Bread um, was it says the yearly Passover feast and week of unleavened bread along with the sacrifice for seven days they had to eat unleavened bread. Okay? Along with the sacrifice and redemption of the firstborn would preserve the memory of the Lord's actions for the sake of later generations. As a result, his law would be in their mouths, that is, they would obey him. Um, so, he also made a point to say that nobody could... Uh, be a part of the Passover as far as like if there were their slaves and they owned them as long as they got circumcised they could but if they were a sojourner or like um, an, uh, um, from a different people and they had it been and they had not been circumcised that they could not take part in the Passover and um, so that's for future when they're when they do the Passover um, unleavened bread just means that it's unleavened. It doesn't have any yeast or anything in it. So, um, 
when they left Egypt, their bread was unleavened. And they already had their cakes and their breads made. And so they were ready for the journey, which should have taken not that long. And then they wind up in the wilderness for a very long time. And we'll get to that eventually. But um, tomorrow we'll read about the Red Sea crossing. And then there's the Song of Moses. Let's see. And I'll go ahead and say we'll do chapter 16 too because it's the bread from heaven. And um, I'm trying to see if there's anything on here that I really want to talk a lot about. It says, A sojourner and a hired servant shall not eat the, pa eat the, the lamb that's killed. Um, in one house it shall be eaten. You shall not carry any of the flesh outside of your house, nor shall you break one of its bones. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger dwells with you and wants to keep the Passover to the Lord, let all of his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as a native of the land. So, I mean, he was pretty particular about um, how they had to do this. So he wanted them to follow his instructions and he wanted them to remember, use it as a remembrance and always um, do it forever. And um, so they had the yearly Passover feast in memory of what happened when the death angel passed over their door. Isn't that really interesting? Um, I thought it was really interesting. So, let me just say this. It took the blood of a lamb to save them. Okay? Because it, that blood had to be on the doorposts and on the lintel in order for that angel to pass by. And now it takes the blood of our Savior Jesus Christ to save us. So that's a really big deal, the significance of the blood, the lamb that was slain. And we know that Jesus Christ is that unspotted, unblemished, perfect lamb that was slain for our sin. And just like the Israelites in Egypt, where God saved them, um, we are like that because we live here in the New Testament in the age of grace after Christ has come and sacrificed himself as the ultimate sacrifice. He's paid the price. Um, it, that's all it takes is him, okay, and his blood. That's it, y'all. It's nothing we could do. It's nothing that we could build up to. It's nothing we can work towards because we're not ever going to be good enough. It's his blood that saves us, not anything that we can do. And with that said, we cannot lose our salvation either, okay? Because we cannot control our salvation to obtain it. We sure can't control losing it, okay? Because we weren't good enough when we were saved to really get it, and we'll never be good enough until we die and we're made more like Jesus Christ, and we live in heavenly places, okay? So, um, y'all just remember that. If you have any questions, you can always send me a message. It may take me a couple of days to read them, because but most of the time after Bible study, I do go and sit down, and I don't always read my messages, maybe until the next day or even the next day, because um, we just stay so busy, and I'm, like, right now, I am so tired. Y'all could probably tell. I just want to go to bed, and it's not even time for bed, but I've had a really long day, and I had a migraine today, and so I had to take uh, my Imitrex today, too, so I'm just not, you know, not my lively self like I normally am, and of all nights, when we talk about the most beautiful thing in the world, the Passover, it's just a beautiful picture of God saving his people, just like the beautiful picture of Christ that God has provided to save his people. So um, I hope y'all have a blessed night. Um, let's remember to pray for each other. Um, when we got together Sunday night and we talked about our Bible lesson in our small group, our, our um, subject was prayer, okay? 
And it's very important that we pray for each other. It's very important that we thank the Lord for things in our life. It's very important that we um, praise the Lord and give Him glory when we pray. And, um, and not be selfish when we pray, okay? So, um, always pray that we could be in the Lord's will and that He would lead and guide us and that we would follow Him. Um, always pray um, for those who are hurting and those who are, who are not hurting. Everybody, no matter who they are, even if they're three years old, needs prayer, okay? Because um, we all need help from the Lord and we all need His blessings. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I have so many people send me messages that are going through chemotherapy, that are going through radiation, that are going through treatments, uh, dialysis, all kinds of things. And I just want to say to you, I can't call on you know each of your names individually, but I do think about you during the day. I do pray. And you know the Lord, the great thing about our Lord is that he is... Um, someone that can hear our thoughts and so we don't even have to say it out loud and he knows what we're thinking so let's think on each other and let's build each other up and let's encourage each other um praise the lord that we have each other okay and that we have fellow christians and um we have something that we can be happy about and share together um we're going to go ahead and pray now dear heavenly father we just thank you so very very much that like those Egyptians that you provided a lamb for and they used that blood for you to pass over them and save them, you've also provided a perfect lamb for us in the time that we live through your only son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for that. We thank you for his blood. We thank you for our salvation we thank you for this holy book that you have given us. We thank you for being our God and sitting up there on a throne and loving us. Um, we thank you for giving us this day to day. We thank you for the, the air that we breathe and the everything that you do for us, Lord. May we not take it for granted. May we remember to pray for each other, pray for our leaders in this country Pray for our families and um, just keep your blessings upon us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope y'all have a good night. I love y'all. I really do. And I do think of you and I do pray for y'all. And I love having y'all here. Um, I'm not going to go to bed yet, Jimmy Sue. <laughs> it's a little early. I think I'm going to pop me some popcorn because I had supper early at 4 o'clock. I really want some kettle corn, and I like Orville Redenbacher's kettle corn, so I'm probably going to pop me some, even if I don't need it. I sure do. I will enjoy it. Now, I don't eat the whole bag, but, um, and I don't like the small bags. They just don't taste as good to me. I pop it, shake it up, and the dogs help me eat. I got three dogs that love popcorn. Y'all have a good night. Thanks for watching, Real Southern Woman. I made y'all a video today with the remaining Hobby Lobby stuff. So I need to get that on there for y'all in the morning. I'll have it on here. Love you. Bye.